You're listening to the Game Tenants Podcast. What's up, and welcome to the Game Tennis Podcast, the failed adventures of two gamers and their quest for GameCast stardom. This is episode 68, and I'm Church of the Game Grinder, and as always, joined by my excellent co-host, Jason of Corpse Flood Game, and how's it going, guys? What yeah! Up, I am amped. We have lots to dig our fangs into this week. What? A lot of, a lot of big news. Hot news. The internet is ablaze. It's it's game news, so it's all hot. Hatness. Hat. So hat out. If I live in Canada, so no, it is not. Yeah, no, not in Minnesota either, where I am. <laughs> Stay away if you can. Absolutely. All right, well, yeah, we've got stuff in Kickstarter. We've got some other cool games coming out. We've got some games getting uh, a port that I'm super excited for. Actual ports I'm excited for for once. Uh, and other stuff from the nintendo direct that was tonight so uh yeah i'm excited yes as always always so what you've been up to sir i have been doing more of the same more gaming what you told me you quit yeah no no uh so let's see last podcast i think i had only finished Claire's can't play through in Resident Evil, right? Yeah, you were starting on the Leon one, I believe. Starting on Leon. So, yeah, so I played through Leon's. Uh, I also beat uh, a run through of Hon- with Hunk and a run through with Tofu. Yo, yo, yo. Good luck. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Cheat is, is like, I had to. I tried a bunch and things just weren't happening. So I, I looked it up. I watched somebody do a run through uh, with Honk. And basically, I used that. It was like your template? Yeah, to get through. And then it basically the same thing kind of applied with Tofu. Sure, yeah. uh, didn't make it easy. I mean, it's still like you still need to do this. You like, still got to get good. You know, you can watch a guy play, you know, professional oh, yeah, there's sports. All, there's all, you're not going to get good at it just because you <laughs> thought, oh, I saw this on TV. I'm, like, I watched The Matrix. I know all these moves now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those were those were neat because just what they did with it. You'll get there because I know you're getting close to the end. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to pick with those modes, though. The uh, crazy thing is when you – beat it with tofu it unlocks two alternate versions of tofu and then they also unlock two additional versions so there's actually five different tofus you can play through as i only did the first one but then the other ones will be like he has a ton of health uh first aid sprays and a ton of grenades good luck (laughs) like uh one's like uh yeah I, i forget um, one, what the other combo was. I but, want to, I'd play the adamantium tofu one if you're right. going. Uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's great because in, in the original Resident Evil 2, it was just, it wasn't even really tofu. It was a, just a thi- a model that they made yeah. to test hitboxes and stuff. Um, where the, in Remake, it, it is a piece of tofu. It jiggles. Yeah. <laughs> He takes hit. There's pieces missing out of him, like he's getting yeah. chomped on by yeah, zombies. He's and yeah, he's got chunks out of him. Yeah, I've watched. I've uh, yeah. seen little clips of it. It looks funny. Doesn't he have like a little like uh, like green beret hat on? <laughs> yeah, he has a beret and he has a funny, a funny sounding voice. I can't understand what he's saying because they didn't translate him. But he has <laughs> some saying some phrases. Is he like Japanese? Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Japanese and the, each tofu has a different voice. Like one of the tofus had like the super deep, like, um, very white. Yeah. No, like think <laughs> yeah, of like, baby, I'm getting like Shogun, like, um, <laughs> deep. I don't, whatever. I digress. Uh, yeah, but Resident <laughs> Evil two. So I, I finished that, uh, jumped back into Spider-Man and I have since completed Spider-Man. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. So we will, we'll, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Just kind of give it a, f- a few minutes of its own time. Well, yeah. uh, then more Beat Saber. Um, yeah, at this point, I have given up on le- leaderboards. Um, it's just some people are just too good, man. You're but just trying, You're just trying to sign up for some esports teams to work yeah, out? Right. But... <laughs> uh, but I do have uh, the two songs I was high uh, that I showed up on the leaderboards. I'm still at 12. So I'll, I'll take it. Sweet. Um, as long as you got but, your screenshots, you're immortal. But exactly. <laughs> uh, but I'm still working on beating all the all the the songs on expert, like perfects. I think I'm like five away from getting the achievement, which is basically what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm gonna get a platinum in the game. You're gonna do it while we podcast. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm here for no way I could do that. <laughs> uh, but then uh, last night, actually, I finally jumped into another VR game and I started playing Job Simulator, which is pretty entertaining. It's not like, ha ha, like rolling on the floor laughing funny, but it's, uh, we, we were talking about this before the podcast and he, Jason mentioned that it's like what you can do. Like, yeah. that's the, the funny parts. The things you can do. It's basic. well, it's a job simulator, so you're goofing around at work yeah. and that's the fun part of it. Except for yeah. like, if there's no like, hit to your income if you get your ass fired for goofing around at this job. Yeah. So that's what makes this game so fun. Yep, and I think I'm about halfway through the game, so I'll probably have it finished up by tomorrow. Sweet. Yeah, it's not very long. Uh, so what have you been up to? Well, since the last podcast, I was extremely busy again. Uh, we had to go out of town on my days off following the following week and that pretty much led to me not getting any gaming down on my heavy gaming days but uh i kept at it i finished my leon playthrough a of resident evil i am at the very end of my claire b i'm making good ass time on it are you still doing the uh no damage reset if you take damage no, I'm not fucking with that because that, <laughs> that didn't give me anything anyway. Yeah, right. Uh, but um, I, it's, I think I'm at, what, like an hour and a half and I'm already at the end. So I'm pretty sure I'll be getting an S rank. Nice. At least for that. So that's cool. Saves uh, are how many saves? Uh, I think I'm just using auto saves. Oh, okay. I, I saved, but then I like when I reload a save, I reload my auto save. So I don't think they sh- they'll even count. Good. Because I think. <laughs> I think it's like two or three or something. Yeah, that, that's, that's, all you can have. that's all I've really had anyway. So yeah, I basically ran through it. I'm I'm a little disappointed about the second run. Yeah, well, um, they, they, there's no like big separating factor besides yeah. like the individual stories themselves, like the Leon and the Claire story, with like yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there, there's like the little area that's not accessible to Leon that is accessible to Claire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a little spin-off storyline with the kid, but that's just about it. Like, yeah, yeah. That's and much why I got through it so fast, I think the second run is even most stuffs in the same spot. Just some uh, codes are different, and yeah, not a whole, not a whole lot. But I'm, uh, but the people like reviewing it saying it's the exact same. Or no, shit. there's there's definitely some differences. Yeah, um, and you experience the other person's story because. Leon has Ada and Claire has Sherry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, that was one of the, like, like I was saying last time, like th- that's one thing that kind of slightly bothered me about Mr. X being in the first playthrough was he was, you know, the thing that mixed up the second playthrough. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, yeah. he has some different, I he mean, was, are, I mean, I, so it's it. I was going to yeah. say there are some differences with him 
yeah. and with the the tire with uh, Birkin in playthrough two, but not as significant. Yeah, Birkin's only kind of different towards the end. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the, as far as boss fights go, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. I'm still enjoying it. It's still fun. And yeah, it's still fucking but, awesome. But just like doing the same puzzles, like, I just uh, hey, if uh, if she did this puzzle, why did Leon have to do that puzzle? <laughs> kind of thing like yeah that that part it's kind of meh but it's nothing that i'm like yeah I'm not, it doesn't actually detract from the game i'm just kind of like oh i hated this part you know like the part in the sewers where you got to go sneak by all those big things yes it was actually way more of a pain in the ass with claire for some reason i got through that no hits uh with leon and then i got through it uh with claire and i'm like Fuck this I is annoying. That part. <laughs> yeah, it was like the most annoying part, especially going to like no saves and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I'd have to redo. Like, the auto save was at a part where I'm like, damn it, I didn't leave enough inventory spots, so I ended up having to like go back and I ended up not make. I think that's where I made my first save because I was like, I am not doing this again for the fifth time. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, all all together though, I'm a. Uh, I'm liking it. Uh, well, and I think I, I, it's helping me like go through it faster. I and mean, it was kind of cool to be like, oh, I know what to do. I know where to go. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually using that thing we discussed last time that you were saying like a lot of people are doing just like shoot him and then the legs and then when they're like staggering yeah. run by him. I, I I don't think I've killed very many zombies altogether. Hmm. <laughs> cool, that so, works. And yeah. I I we did talk about last time that. Um, we, we weren't sure if there was like extra unlockables. Yeah, and... but there, there totally is. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I don't know. Well, it's, not as, it's just unlimited ammo on the pistol, right? Or something. Oh, I heard there was the minigun one and, uh, and the RPG. I don't know. I keep seeing oh. conflicting things. I, well, before the last one, I looked it up and they're like, ah, oh, shame. There's none of that stuff. So then mm-hmm. I'm looking like an idiot saying, oh, okay, I guess there's none of that stuff. And then, yeah, I see that the pistol ammo is like for one. And I don't know. I'll get I'll get it myself and see what, what's what. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I, I, if I would have got like an extra half an hour tonight, I would have mm-hmm. finished it right before you. So what else? Um, besides that, uh, not a whole lot else. I've been playing a little bit of uh, my arcade thing with the kids again. Uh, I don't know if I've beat any new games on it in the last couple of weeks. What's the though, arcade but... thing for people who don't know what the arcade thing is? Oh, my! I was talking about it in the last podcast. It's a, uh, a twin stick arcade plug and play that's got 1,299 preloaded games on it. And... Uh, Cheap. Yeah, I, I, I played a bunch with the kids, but I don't know if I beat any. I'd have to look. I usually take a picture, but uh, I think we we beat Sailor Moon and all that. Right on. That, that was a pretty cool beat 'em up. I don't know. I'm, most of the games I've been playing, every time I see a beat 'em up, I like can't stay away. I just play the beat 'em ups. I haven't played a lot of the shooters or fighting games yet. Played a bit of Metal Slug and stuff like that, but yeah, I'm I'm wanting to test it more and more, but. Yeah, like I said, has been cut down by having to go out of town. But uh, I'll be catching back up. I'll have a bunch more to talk about next time, I'm sure. Sweet. Besides that, uh, not a whole lot. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I've been. I picked. I picked up some more VR games. So while I was out of town, a couple other cool things. I got that Creed game. I'd actually want to try that out. The boxing one. I've sure. Played. Seen people saying cool shit about it. I'm not big on the boxing games, uh, but I don't know. It could be funny in VR. Yeah, I like. I I wasn't really big on the Wii boxing, which is what kind of, it kind of looks like to me. But yeah, Wii boxing was pretty lame. No, I, I yeah, I couldn't get in. I liked all the other games on that game, but I think the boxing was the one I played the least, and the the baseball one I hated at first because. I was actually like swinging as hard as I could to hit the balls. <laughs> and then I realized I'm like, oh, it's just a fucking little sensor. It's yeah. Just as fast as that goes. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm like throwing my shoulder out. 
trying, <laughs> trying to hit home runs and my brother's just like barely moving his arm and I'm like what the hell is this shit is this thing broken like i thought my controller was fucked it's just me <laughs> but yeah, besides that uh yeah that's about it cool so uh let's move into the retro game highlight uh last time you had talked about teenage mutant ninja turtles uh three manhattan project yeah yeah good stuff good stuff uh what so got? i got something we'll kind of touch on a little bit later i guess in some news but i think it's pretty much retro at this point but we're gonna say neverwinter nights so for anybody who doesn't know what neverwinter nights is it was a pc game released by bioware in 2002 17 years ago that's BioWare. crazy oh, it's just a shame they didn't really ever go anywhere here yeah, right uh, you know, they had some notables before that, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, so on. But uh, Neverwinter Nights uh, was a particularly awesome game, for me anyways. Um, it, uh, like I said, it was a PC game. Uh, it's a CRPG, so it plays like Baldur's Gate, you know, your isometric RPGs, kind of. Uh, they added a lot more functionality in Neverwinter Nights. You could, you know, change your camera angle, rotate the screen... Kind of think Dragon Age, like uh, you know, before but a little less refined because the the team that made Neverwinter Nights went on to make Dragon Age. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, so the game has a traditional campaign. It's a uh, you know based in the the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms universe. Pretty good story. Um, you know, in depth. RPG mechanics, you know, it uses the Dungeons and Dragons rule set and, you know, a lot of the official setting locations and so on and so forth. But the big thing was the the uh, included Aurora tool set that came along with the game. And essentially what the Aurora tool set was, was a very user-friendly uh, toolkit of the game's resources where essentially you can make your own mod. They call them modules, but you can make your own. You, you know, basically had like a dungeon game. master as it was like a. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of like a. Dungeon yeah. Master. Especially on top yeah. of it. So uh, at first, you know, people were just making like a little arena where you could make any weapon in the game and any armor. And then you could just go out and fight people. And it was just random people going in. And then eventually they got a little bit more sophisticated and they added, people started making some stories uh then eventually it had the people who made the persistent world servers most of these uh, or a lot of these i should say were role-playing enforced which means you had to role play a character you had to be in character have you know a story and talk in character and stuff and people basically created living breathing worlds i wouldn't say like necessarily like a mmo mmos were a lot bigger this was way more small scaled like uh i think one of the more popular servers i played on might have had like an active player base of like maybe a hundred people or so but these are people who spent like hours and hours that's still pretty significant honestly though but a lot of them weren't on at the same time. Um, I'm trying to remember what the server max was because there was a limit. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. It's actually been a really long time. But um, these Persistent World servers were great. Uh, a lot of the ones I played on were based in uh, the Forgotten Realms setting. So there are actual locations in uh, the world of Faron, And uh, you could have... You know, not only could they make a custom world, do all sorts of custom things, but you could have admins who are basically the dungeon masters, invisible players that could make quests and make uh, changes to the game world on the fly. Like events and stuff? Yeah, and it, it was awesome, and it's great. And we're going to be talking about this. Uh, in a, actually, we'll just jump right into it. I guess. Uh, so kind of the thing that kicked off my uh, renewed interest in Neverwinter Nights again, which is something that I always 
I come back to think about Neverwinter Nights nice, at least like once a year. Like, oh man, I really want to go back and replay the games and revisit some of those servers. I actually got in contact. Uh, there was a group, a Facebook group of a few players from this one particular uh, server I used to play on that I discovered. Uh, there's like five or six guys uh, that just tracked each other down. And now that we got this little Facebook group, we were kind of, you know, reminisce about some of our characters and interactions and stuff like that. But, um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's, it's a really great game, but, uh, I believe I just lost my link. I think it's beam dog is the company. Yeah. Beam dog. Uh, they are doing console ports of Neverwinter nights, Baldur's gate, Icewind Dale, and I think uh, possibly other Bioware Classic CRPGs are being poured into the consoles uh, later this year. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Van, Baldur's Gate, Siege of Dragon Spear, Icewind Dale, Neverwinter Nights, and Planescape Torment. And they're doing it with uh, Skybound games also. Mm. So, now, they already did... Um, they did a enhanced version of Neverwinter Nights a few years ago, basically just kind of giving you the higher resolution options and whatnot. Uh, that package included all the uh, expansions, the uh, Shadows of Undertide and Hordes of uh, the Underdark, which were basically full additional games tacked on that gave like prestige classes and stuff like that, which was awesome that. for the Persistent World uh, servers i used to play um and they also did the the baldur's gate uh re remaster as well as the uh, the expansion the dragon spire which had some controversy but yeah you know, i think anybody's going to be doing uh these games justice it's going to be beam dog and Skyman. i'm in Skybound, and I'm kind of expecting. I really, I, I don't believe Neverwinter Nights is going to get the Aurora tool set or the server hosting functionality that the PC version still has. Like, there's still people who have some of these servers up. You know, not just the persistent world, but these custom games and things like that. Even yeah. if the enhanced version has that, uh, but I, I, I just don't. You see yeah. that being an option for the console. How do you host a server on a console? Yeah, even well, I mean, you could in like Battlefield games and stuff like that. You could buy your own servers on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, uh, even if it was like a scaled down version, I mean, something's better than nothing. That would be cool. I'm excited just to try these games anyway because the only Baldur's Game Gate games I've ever gotten to play were uh, the ones for the PS2. So uh, I'm a big yeah, fan sure. of those kind of games. Before I was in, like, I wasn't always a fan of RPGs. I've mm -hmm. told the story before, like turn-based and strategy RPGs. I just couldn't get into them because I watched a bunch of like friends playing them a lot and it just kind of killed it for me. Like, oh, God, no, I don't want to play that shit. And I just couldn't get into them even when I tried them on my own. But uh, I've always been a fan of the, you know, the isometric dungeon crawler games, you know, the Diablos and shit like that. So I am all for all these coming out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I might not be able to make it to the podcast after these ones come <laughs> for, for a little while. Yeah, see on, I'll see you online though. So, <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to to kind of see the reaction. Like once maybe more people see these games, um, you know they're 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 classics. You know these yeah. are all late nineties releases. Like I said, never one of nice is two thousand two, so it's. The you know, they're definitely old looking right? games. The newest one's 2016, isn't it? I believe. What? Uh, the Baldur's Gate Siege of Dragon Spear is 2016. Yes. But all everything else, like the newest one besides that, is like 2002. With yeah, Neverland and Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale um, were slightly different because they use uh, sprites, Sweet. I believe. Where mm -hmm. Neverwinter Nights was all like 3D rendered everything, so it's very blocky looking. Very low, uh, you know, low res textures. <laughs> I'm not flat surfaces. 
I'm not going to complain about that shit one bit. Yeah. Like I said, I love those kind of games, and uh, I don't think it's any su- surprise to anyone to hear that we are old school gamers, so we can do with a little bit of uh, low rezzing. Doesn't hold up isn't in my vocabulary, despite no. that I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> you pronounced it wrong, so obviously it isn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's something I'm definitely looking forward to. I heard they're getting physical releases too, and I'm wondering how they're going to do that, like a box set, or if it's just going to be like a multi-disc mm-hmm. release. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I, I'm hoping they don't do them like one at a time something like that like it's something that i think i'd like to buy as like a, a set yeah and it, a collection, you know, it like makes a sense for them to do that like and co- that would be like holy crap that'd be a package that's like hundreds of hours like neverwinter nights yeah. if i remember correctly like it was a long game like 60 hours or something and then the expansions with that did you say that was like pretty much all you played for like a couple of years yeah, well, because I played these persistent world servers that didn't yeah. have, you know, it was just a role playing setting with, yeah, I, I, role playing characters, and yeah, I I played it for like a solid like two and a half years, like that was my like addiction game. Like there's a jo- there's a couple jobs I had at the time that I was calling in frequently, <laughs> like it actually like strained the relationship that I was in at the time. Cause that's all I wanted to do is play this game. Damn. And I had a roommate that uh, we had issues with the roommate because, Hey, I'm playing an online game in 2002, 2003. I'm using <laughs> dial up. <laughs> so He's, he could never use the phone. <laughs> could never <laughs> use the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's that, definitely something the game. Was, the game was your wow. Oh, you said you played WoW back in the I did play WoW, too. (laughs) (laughs) Right on. Yeah. That's that's awesome. So, yeah, that's definitely something. That that might be what I'm looking forward to most this year, if it's coming this year. like Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff to look forward to this year. I mean, as far as 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 stuff that's being remastered or whatever, that's definitely the biggest one I'm looking forward to. These are – this will be all new experiences to me, so – it's, mm-hmm. it's like six games coming out at once. Yeah. So amazing. Yep. Yep. So I, I guess um, let's kind of keep talking about some announcements or releases uh, yeah. before. Absolutely. Poo poo news. Uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> <Poo-poo> news. <laughs> yeah. You don't have poo poo news on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beat Saber Expert Plus has been released on PSVR. So that's Sweet. awesome. So you're, uh, not done. you're not done. Just when you thought you were almost done, and you got another, you got another level to step up to. Well, and here's the thing: is like, so I didn't really know. Well, I guess I did see some hubbub. People are like, "Hey, we need Expert Plus." Who the hell can play these songs? Like, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Just like I just sure. tried. I, I tried a couple. Just I didn't really like, you know, more than a few minutes. Like I didn't practice for like an hour or anything mm-hmm. <laughs> the expert versions of these songs like i can crush them like almost every single song i can at least get like damn near perfect these are insane like i'm not even gonna bother until i i get my my expert achievement yeah like, like uh just life hack basically tape your your uh motion controllers to like uh fan blades and then just have it sit in front of the tv <laughs> pretty much <laughs> pretty much so yeah that's pretty neat um yeah. what else we got uh fx unit yuki dreamcast version uh has a release date ish uh, it's gonna be re- they're planning on getting it out uh march middle to the end of march is the expected like, that's a two-week window that's pretty that's a pretty nailed down release. It's not an exact date. You know, and it's only a month away. So Hell's right good. around the corner. So that's pretty neat. They, uh, not a lot of changes. They did some bug, like bug fixes that were discovered in the, the turbo graphics or the, the turbo CD version. So there's some bug fixes. They added in and changed a couple sound effects 
I guess. Oh yeah, because it's more of like an advanced console, so there's probably yeah more they got a little bit extra uh, extra room to work with, but mo- mostly it's it's the same game. That's good. Yeah, you don't want to change it too much. And then they they're still working on the um, the Genesis or Mega Drive port. Isn't there supposed to be Genesis and NES at some point, or Super Nintendo? Or? I'm not sure what's going on with possible other versions. I know the they're they're focusing on now trying to get the the Mega Drive version out, and they're also working on the like PC Steam version. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. That, definitely. If you haven't picked it up yet on the Turbo CD, Dreamcast sounds like it's the way to go. Yes, sir. It's available for pre-order on the site right now. It's kind of limited, though. Uh, they only have like 100 copies outside of what uh, the backers are doing, at least for this initial run. So, Awesome. Not a lot. Not a lot. So, speaking of backing, you recently backed a different game. Yes. That- the game that this should be the game everybody should be excited for this year. Nuts to amazing RPG remasters. Nuts to Zelda Link's Awakening. I mean, bah. Bah. Who cares? We're talking Bubsy. What the shit are you talking about to me right Bubsy now? Bubsy Paws on Fire. You just you just threw some fire my way. What's all that about? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, there is currently a Bubsy Pause of Fire Kickstarter. Uh, not for the game itself. The game's actually already coming out in April. Uh, and what, before you kind of roll your eyes, oh, blah, Bubsy. Uh, they actually are kind of doing something a little different with this one. If anybody's familiar with the Runner series. Uh, it's a side-scrolling runner game. Uh, I've never actually played Runner or Runner Two or Runner Three. I think Three's out now. Um, what about Mario Run? Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of basically the same thing. Um, and this one is with Bubsy. Actually, looks like you watch the trailer. Actually, looks pretty cool. Looks fun. Uh, they are doing a Kickstarter to try to add a bunch more stuff to the game. Uh, I so basically the Kickstarter is all stretch goals. Essentially, uh, yeah. they're they're shooting for like I think it was twenty five thousand. Wasn't a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, one of the one yeah. of the tiers is a physical version. So as far as, as, far as dev costs goes, that's pretty low. So yeah, and they want to do some like alternate characters and. Uh, I think it adds some different levels. And oh man, they need a fat one named Chubsy, just a big fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> he runs slower and he climbs not as high. <laughs> so the game well, basically needs like a hard mode character. And see what could potentially be funny about that is if you follow uh, the Bubsy account on Twitter, every once in a while, like somebody will like kind of like throw shade. At, at Bubsy yeah. and the whoever runs the account like kind of like holds their own it's not like overly like is it like Wendy's uh, n- not as <laughs> not as like Wendy's is like particularly good at what they do when it comes to that stuff but it's entertaining at least so they wouldn't be I don't think they'd be too worried about like oh we're gonna I don't know, throw a character called Chubsy in the game. Chubsy. And there could be like a short one named like Nubsy. There you go. Short, short legs and short arms. That'd be cool. An <laughs> overly excited one called Rubsy. <laughs> he doesn't do a lot of running. He just does a lot of like hiding in bushes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. That's... And the, there would be the younger version, like Cubsy. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, enough. Yes, enough. Uh, <laughs> further Kickstarter news. Well, uh, speaking of things that we've backed, uh, the only thing I've ever actually backed on Kickstarter was the NES Maker. And the uh, software came out last summer. I think it was, I think it was last like August. And they recently finally got the 
uh, uh, cartridge flashers out uh, for that. So you can actually flash the games you make in the software onto a physical cart. And I'm excited for that. Uh, I actually haven't uh, went and grabbed mine from the mail yet, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to play around with it. I've kind of been holding off on using the program as they're still updating it all the time. They're still getting the bugs out and stuff like that. Um, and I don't want to like get used to a version and then have them update it and me be like, okay, hey, know what the hell am I doing? Or like, you know, my, my game I was working on all of a sudden won't work with the software kind of thing. Uh, they're not having a lot of problems with it. People have made some really impressive stuff with it so far from what I've seen. Like stuff that you're like, there's no way that'll actually work on NES and they... Yeah, I haven't actually yeah, seen any, any of the things okay. people have made. Uh, Nerd Strategy, another YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's actually been working on a game and that's pretty much all the only thing I've seen of it. Like outside of the initial like Kickstarter I should, uh, announcement, I should add you to the group. It's pretty fascinating the stuff that people have come up with. Uh, uh, like they're working on the different modules and stuff, and like all the modules aren't out yet. And I think that's more what I'm waiting for because like uh, yeah. there's going to be like a beat 'em up module, and that's a big part of what I want to make in my game. Mine's going to be kind of like a two genres kind of game. Hell yeah! Uh, so. Once they get that part out, I'll probably actually get way more in depth with it. But right now, uh, the devs are really, really like hands-on and, and uh, community-oriented. Like they're constantly helping everyone, uh, either in the forums on their site or on the Facebook group. All types of stuff. The guys got like patience of a saint. The people like uh, people on there just trying to get free copies and junk, and he hand handles it like without, you know, telling them to fuck off, honestly, like I would. Oh, is there a way to like get this free? Is there like a free to play version of this? And come on, man. It's like, I think it's like 30, 32 bucks for the software. Mm -hmm. like, come on now. Yeah. So uh, they're actually have gone dark for the rest. I think it's just a month. Uh, the creators of it, because they're putting on a contest, like an NES maker contest. Of like we can make like the best game and it's open from everybody who from like season like professionals to newcomers and i think that's really cool uh great. i'm definitely not regretting backing that at all it's uh something that i've always wanted to do like who hasn't ever wanted to be like man i wish i could make my own nintendo games you know totally you, you know uh, i talked with you about this before even at your house you showed me like your mega man <laughs> The levels I used to make with my friends, where you just you make up your own random characters and you just draw this level on a piece of paper, you'd be like, "You gotta beat it," and and then your friend would have to like follow with their finger. All right, I jump here and I'd swing yep, down. Here. Yep. So, so yeah, so I'm, something I'm pretty sure every gamer has thought of at one point of how cool it would be to make a game, and uh, you don't need to know coding for it. I mean, it, it definitely would probably help. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's basically a dream come true. So I'm looking to jump into that sooner rather than later. But yeah, I'm definitely happy that I backed it and they didn't just like throw it out and go, yeah, there it is, and then not you know support it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. There's, but there's already people going like, when's the Super Nintendo Maker coming out? <laughs> You're like, come on, man! I haven't got all the bugs out of this one yet. Yeah, that's that's the thing with Kickstarter. Like, it's, that's what I mean. This guy the problem with Kickstarters is sometimes they these people don't really they don't necessarily have great uh, ideas of how long it's going to take them to make these things. So a lot of times they do over promise. Yeah, and Kickstarters end up taking like a lot longer to get like stretch goals and things like that. Yeah, it's. It is what it is. I'm not mad at it all. Like everything's yeah. in a pretty timely manner. Like they said, it was. He said it was going to come out around the end of last summer, and it did. Mm -hmm. I think it came out maybe like a week or two later than they initially were thinking. But like two weeks is no big deal. Look at how many games are still in like alpha mm -hmm. <laughs> that have been kickstarted or just like completely abandoned. Uh, yeah, like the stuff that people are doing with this program is just amazing. Yeah. 
So uh, if you haven't checked it out, I definitely say look it up. And it's on Facebook. They've got their own website. Definitely look into it if it's something you've ever wanted to do. Uh, I definitely need the time to do this. But uh, when I get that time, I'm going all in. I'll just make oh. my game. Uh, it's just going to be the easiest uh, thought of title ever. It'll just be called Corpse Flood. And it'll be super violent, I'm sure. <laughs> what other games uh, you got coming out? Well, uh, we can kind of tie tie this, uh, you know, whole Kickstarter game delays, you know, waiting until it's ready, sort of thing. Ties into there's some relevancy to the the Nintendo Direct today. No, no. Now, normally, I'm not one who gives two shits about Nintendo Direct, but this one, I will. I'll hey, there's some pretty cool stuff that was announced. I would imagine you'd say you'll agree. Oh yeah, there's some great stuff announced. There was some stuff that finally got a release date. Some stuff we even <laughs> got like an actual first real look at. Yes. Today that actually has a release date already too. So, uh, and and what I was getting at about Kickstarter and release, well, I should say quote air quotes release date. Uh, Bloodstained, uh, Ritual of the Night release has. Window. Oh, release window. Yeah. <laughs> Summer 2019. So, so I am super hyped. I backed this game six years ago now, I think. Six years? That long ago? Five? five? Really? I can't remember. Yeah, it's, really, it's really been that long? I thought it was only like a while ago. I thought it was like it's, since I've known you. Damn, that a is long a long time. time. But it's... It's looking good for the time spent. Anyway. Yeah, okay. 2015, sorry. So it's been... Four years. Four years. Four or less. That's that's still quite a wait after, you know. But they've, it's not like they've been in the keeping everyone in the dark. Not yeah. completely. No, they've <laughs> great, great... Uh, they've handled it very well. They've... For me, anyways, like, they've communicated... The whole time, no long periods of dark. It's always updates and it's always progress and, and more content. So, and they've given us the eight-bit uh, version to yes. tide us over too. And that's Curse of the Moon. Excellent. Curse of the Moon is excellent. So but, yeah. Besides that, there has been a couple other ones. Uh, Damon X Machina got a release date. Or a release window also of the summer, I believe. Uh, Ultimate Alliance 3, which my wife and I are ridiculously stoked for, is coming out this summer. And, uh, yeah, there's there's a whole lot to talk about. Uh, usually I kind of skip the directs, too. They're usually mostly focused on, like, one game, it seems like. Usually something like Smash or something that I don't really need to keep up with. So I don't bother, but uh, for some reason I just kind of skimmed this one and just a lot of cool crap. They announced a cool new game uh, called Astral Chain, which is the next Platinum game. Looks dope. Yeah, you're like some kind of futuristic police. It's a real like anime inspired look to it. It looks like an it RPG. From what I can tell, it I'm pretty sure it's using the same engine that Platinum used for Nier Automata, and it actually has the the same director, um, Hideki Kamiya, who is also, or he was the director for Nier. He's the supervisor for Astral Chain. Oh, okay. But they also have. Um, Let's see, uh, the other guy is Takahisa Tura, also of Nier Automata, is working on this. And when I was looking at it, like just some of the character, like models and stuff, like I was like, that really looks like the Nier Automata engine. Sweet. Well, but it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really, really promising. Uh, it's the first look we got at it today, and it's something I'm definitely going to keep my eye on. Yeah. As uh, as here, else, here's hoping that. Uh, you know, not it's just... A, it's uh, a Switch, Switch exclusive. exclusive. It's a Switch exclusive. 
It says, I think this one, there was one that on the announcement, it said launching exclusively on Switch. So right. I, I'm pretty sure that was Astral Chain that I saw that. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh, man. I mean, see, no, not more lately, it seems like like Hellblade was uh, PS4 exclusive when it first launched. Then when it got its physical version, it launched on uh, Hellblade Xbox, was on and then X- PC wow. and Xbox as well. Was it not from launch? It wasn't, though. Yep, uh, I got it on PC originally. Well, it wasn't on Xbox. <laughs> How Maybe it was PC. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, no, it was PC exclusive. No, was it? What the hell? I don't. It whatever. Was, I was, well, it was PS4. I was talking about as far as consoles, anyway. Uh, it was. I think it was PS4 exclusive at first, and then it came out like near it. Speaking of near, near was a PS4 exclusive, and later, I think about a year afterwards, the. Uh, Become as God's edition came out for Xbox. Mm-hmm. So maybe they'll just do something like that. Maybe it'll be like a year exclusive and later on. Yeah, I'm fine. Like, I am totally fine fine ugh, with timed exclusivity. Yeah. But um yeah, here's here's hoping for ports. All the Switch people get to say, oh fucking switch port this. Nintendo's oh, done it again! Uh, I'm gonna start being. Hey, they need to port this to PS4. Yeah, because you know the you, PS4 you, you, is port, still port, the most selling system. What is, it, what is it? Port baking. So what they said they they could the uh, they're saying the de- Devil May Cry guy yeah. got accused of port baking because they're like <laughs> we want we want Dante and Smash and then he's like, well get a Devil May Cry game on the Switch then get talk to them. <laughs> Why don't you talk to them? You're the developer, yeah, right? But uh, uh, yeah, besides that, I am even more stoked for the Fire Emblem Three Houses. It looks magnificent. Uh, I pre-ordered it as soon as they announced it. When I pre-ordered it on Amazon, they just had the logo. <laughs> they didn't even have the cover art for it. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a good call. It's it's looking awesome. It looks like uh, full motion cutscenes and like and fully animated anime anime cutscenes cut and even the battle uh, animations doesn't just go to like the two who are uh, two characters who are fighting. Like it actually takes place on the battlefield, which is more of a close up on the two characters. Uh, which I think is really cool for immersion in the actual battle itself. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a long time since they've had a a console Fire Emblem game. Last one was on the Wii, and uh, this looks like it's not going to disappoint. I'm really looking forward. That might be my. I I might be the most excited for that game out of everything this year, honestly. So. That's saying something because this year looks awesome. Even more, I think, than uh, the fucking Link's Awakening uh, remake that they announced at the very end of it. Looks pretty awesome, I think. I exploded in my pants. Uh, <laughs> I uh, will say, it, uh, I was talking with the, the Retro Bro about this a little bit and uh he was like you know just like the rest of us like oh that looks really cool and he's like uh i hope they're not charging more than 40 dollars for this i was like i had to look it up because i was thinking to myself i was like oh come on this is nintendo we're talking about 40 dollars they're gonna do it full price sure enough best buy had pre-orders up for it 60 dollars. i don't care this is the first game i ever owned and I don't really care about remakes that much. I could take them or leave them for the most part. Resident Evil 2 being uh, a little bit of a different... Mana? Was, yeah. I thought Mana was awesome. Yeah, man, like, like, so, I mean, uh, there's very few that I actually get excited for. Mana, Resident Evil 2. Uh, Shadow Colossus. A, a handful. Handfuls. 
handfuls of like stuff. You know, a lot of them are just remasters, honestly. Recent uh, recent year, a uh, couple years have been really great with remakes. Yeah, but I don't get giantly excited. This has me actually really excited because, like I said, it's a very fanboy. I know this is. What's more is that this is the first game I ever owned. Like I said, yeah. I am very much looking forward to revisiting it. Uh, they got a different uh, art style for it. it. Looks almost claymation. Um, it like a three like D claymation. It really look claymation. Not, not exactly claymation, but it almost looks like it has a like a plastic. chibi style. Like yeah, like a plastic. It almost looks plasticky. I don't know. I, I think it looks it looks really good for I I like the aesthetic of the old one of the original. Mm-hmm. This one it, the aesthetic is different. I mean the level the everything looks like looks similar. Um but yeah no I think it looks oh, yeah I could I could great. definitely recognize all the landmarks that they were showing in the trailer. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's you know it's probably going to it's probably going to tickle the nostalgia a lot. And I believe it's coming out this year, too, right? Yeah, it's, I think it, they said it's out this summer, too, so hell yes. Yeah. The summer or late, or late 2019. Either way. Yeah. I I would think it should be a little bit cheaper, but I... Also Nintendo tax. Honestly, though, <laughs> it's, it's expected at this point. For people who buy games that came out two years ago for full price to complain about a game that's like what 20 26 years old coming mm-hmm. out whatever yeah man. Yeah. Uh, um, that, that, i think that's what i'm most hi- more excited about is it's a game that hasn't come out again well i mean they had the dx edition yeah, on yeah on Game Boy Color, but that was only a couple of years after. Like, I never even got that when it came out. Like, I just got that a little while ago, honestly. But... No, it definitely looks looks cool. Kind of... Yeah, makes me think maybe someday I'll look forward to playing it when I have a Switch, but I'm not buying a Switch anytime soon. Are you hinting at me to send you a Switch? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'll fucking get you. <laughs> Break your goddamn hands. <laughs> Don't send anything ever again. <laughs> Change your address. <laughs> um, but there is even more stuff announced. Uh, Delta Rune. Hey. Yeah. Well, I was Hi. gonna. I was gonna take everything <laughs> for free. Delta for free. Rune for free, people. Sweet. I mean, it was also free for for us, us PC folks, but oh, yeah. uh, chapter one is free, so it's not the whole game. That's all. You just got the first chapter out. It'll take you a few hours to play through it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a few years before we see the rest of the game. This is weird that this is like the a better upgraded version. Uh, Delta Rune S Definitive Edition. It's... <laughs> Fuck. I'm just kidding. I'm just going up. I'm just trying to trigger you now. <laughs> yeah, because because they did do that with uh, Dread Quest Eleven, uh, which is also getting a Switch port. Uh, the game that Square Enix said that if you people don't buy enough copies of this game, you will never see another Dragon Quest game again. Oh, sales didn't do what we wanted them to do, but hey, here's a Switch port anyways. And they they're adding new stuff. To the Switch port. They're adding the features that were actually supposed to be in the canceled 3DS port. They're adding mm-hmm. uh, retro mode, so you can switch over to to uh, 16-bit graphics when you're playing the game. I'm not exactly... They didn't show a lot of that, so I don't really know exactly how that's going to work. Um, Basically, the also... way... Sorry, what? No, go, go for it. Basically, the 3DS version, the bottom screen was going to be closer to like the current gen graphics and the top or wait was no the top screen was going to be the current gen graphics and the bottom screen was going to be in like a 16-bit thing that's how they were planning it out when it was first coming out because i think i was on the podcast or either that or you were just talking about it before 
Mm. But I was like, yeah, I'll be buying that on PS4 and at least 3DS, if not 3DS and Switch. I was like, that looks so awesome. And that was yeah. like one of, that was like what was selling me on the 3DS one. And, like, way, they, and I was like, I was actually bummed about it because I think the 3DS one was the one I was looking forward to the most. Right. So you're saying they canceled the 3DS port, and yet people still refuse to admit that the 3DS is essentially dead, and the Switch is now the new handheld well, they, slash console. Yeah. Well, <laughs> look at look at all the great new 3DS games they announced. Yeah. Oh, right. They didn't announce any. But uh, the so was Dragon Quest. Then they also there are the the one the one thing that really would have made the game not necessarily better, but it would have been an improvement that would have really resonated with me. Is uh, you get the orchestral mode, so you can switch between the 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 MIDI versions, which are on the the PS4 PC version. But well, you uh, liked those a lot. I mean, they're fine, but. Uh, actually, really, what they needed was a bigger soundtrack. Uh, it wasn't even really the songs; it was just that they had like twenty songs for a, you know, hundred-hour RPG. Yeah. <laughs> but you get the orchestral mode. Um, then all main characters have uh, a story quest, like about them. So. You kinda, mad? Bro? A little, a little mad. I mean. We don't know. Maybe they will release this as a, you know, like an update for just a free forty dollar update. <laughs> oh, and I'm pretty sure they're charging sixty dollars for this game too for on the Switch. That ain't bad. Look at all the extra stuff you're actually getting, rather than buy a, that, buy, that's the buy, argument. That's why. That's what, what chaps my ass. Well, I mean, like usually it's just like here's the game that came out three years ago. Okay, what's cool? For cheaper. About it. What's cool about it? Uh, carry it yeah. with you. Yeah. Is, well, there, so, is there is there more levels? No, it's the game that you love already. Well, love it's it more. Love it's it more, more while you're taking your shit. Or on so the those people demanding ports for the Switch. Yeah. That's what you get. You get yeah. the game. Why do you get special shit? Fucking Switch. <laughs> you need shit, Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah. You got your your rabid fan base. That's fine, but like, why? I no, I, I don't. I don't get the Nintendo text bullshit myself either. Uh, it's gross. I I think if a game's gonna come out that much later, either have it as a comped price, like Doom coming out at eighty dollars when it was like what it was already two years old at that point, wasn't it? Stuff like that. I was like, why? yeah. I mean, it's only like six. No, it's more than six months. No, it's about six months because it came out in uh, the end of August, right? Was it? Or was it September? I can't remember. Uh, Anyways, so I mean, it's six months. It's not like a huge time difference, but, you know, it's already discounted heavily. Yeah. Well, on the, the PS4 and the PC. So I, I, I'm just not going to say that, like, people, uh, a lot of people think that, like, all the Switch has is ports. There is a ton of ports. There's an annoying amount of them that have little to no difference to the Wii U versions. Mm -hmm. That's what gets me. Like, why? Yeah. Like, Wii U's are cheap now and stuff. Just get yeah, that. no, that's <laughs> fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving the shit, the Switch, shit because it has lots of ports. Like, I would, I wish more games were available for everybody. You know, I'm yeah. not crazy about exclusivity like yeah. you know zelda i understand zelda you know and stuff like that but yeah but i know yeah. i i'll i'll defend it just to say that it's not just ports yeah i'm not on the nintendo side like I, there's a lot of a lot a lot a lot of poor shit surrounding nintendo yeah, yeah. And, and they're like even like every new game that comes out you're like oh cool it's good switch port oh but it comes out three months later six months later you look at like Dark Souls and shit like that. They get everything. They get Nintendo stuff and everybody else's stuff. Yeah. And they don't give anybody else stuff. It's like, you bitches. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, uh, so moving the on. Gear, the new Gears of War, Cappy is in it. It's going to yeah. be cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, I'm sure you heard the news of 
Xbox Live going on to the Switch? Yeah, they're they're going for like a single sign-on kind of kind of environment, but you know, I think that's really cool. Actually, I'm yeah. safe because uh, that's what I'll, you know. I've heard a few people mention it too that like Xbox has achievements, PS4 has trophies, Nintendo has nothing. Dude, and people are like, they need their what is, to smash. Yeah, well, I'll get some Halo. Uh, they're gonna add Halo to Smash. <laughs> Halo, Halo man. Gonna, you guys can't. I, even... I, I, I said that on purpose. Just uh, just let everybody know that was a joke. I know it's, like, it's not Halo. Zelda was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it. Uh, I I think it's really cool. Of, especially that. I think it's almost like they're just tr- trying to like make Sony look more bad. Because like, because yeah. everybody's on like the cross plat. Thing yeah, and Sony's still like, yeah. Which, really, if you think about it, if you were to like, if someone showed you the three companies and was like, which one do you think would be like, nah, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to play with Nintendo. the others, and you'd be like, Nintendo, Nintendo won't. Do Nintendo's that. barely on the cross play thing. Like, barely. They they just they only get to say that they're participate. Like, past that, they don't really get much claim. It's mostly PC. Xbox cross play yeah. stuff. And I mean Rocket League is one thing, but you know, and no, uh, you know, Fortnite they got cross play and whatnot, but yeah. barely. So they don't get Nintendo don't get to boast that. I don't say they're amazing for that, but it's I yeah. think it's cool that they'd even let Xbox Live be yeah. on there. I I wanna see I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh people are all like trying to theorize like, whoa, what if uh what if Microsoft's getting out of the console game and they're going to join yeah. up with Nintendo and do the hardware and this and Nintendo makes the games. I'm like, eh, well, at least, I, at least then uh, Microsoft will have some games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but speaking of games, uh, one of the game that I wanted to mention that looks pretty neat uh, Neato and Completo. is available as of the Nintendo Direct was Tetris 99. Oh, yeah. It was kind of cool. I like got 99 players Tetris. Yes. And I, well, as you get Tetrises and clear lines, like it messes with other people. And it's like a basic, and it's, it's basically a battle royale Tetris. Oh, uh, I know how much you like fun. that. Battle royale. Yeah, it, it, it is. I don't know. We almost had to postpone because we were both just playing so much Fortnite that we're like, <laughs> oh, we should just do it a different night. I will say, I, I, I will say that Apex Legends does look kind of neat. It's I, mean, I, I never thought, I never thought like Fortnite and PUBG look like bad games. They're just, they're not for me. Um, well, well, basically. Uh, Fortnite is the greatest game I've never played because yeah. it, keep, it keeps all the stupid kids in one spot. Yes, and I love that this is like a, a big thing like everybody's talking about. Like they even were talking about it on uh, Game Deflators. Uh, this very thing is like, no, Fortnite's fucking great because it keeps all 12-year-olds away. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I thought about it right away. I'm like, everyone's shitting on it. I'm like, well... But I, then I, again, I, you know... Yeah, there's a lot of kids that do play it, but there's a lot more kids that don't play it. And yeah. those kids are playing all your other games, too. I You don't know how many times I deliver a pizza and an eight-year-old pops in and is like, Hey, Pizza Man, you play Fortnite? <laughs> like, that's actually an epidemic. You no, know, it, it, it it truly is an epidemic. Like, it's not I'm just... Like, it's not it, necessarily like Fortnite. Fortnite's just part of the culture. So I work... For, for, for listeners, uh, I work in an education field, and I work in elementary schools. Um, and I, I've asked te- teachers, and I've asked kids. Uh, like every kid knows what Fortnite is. Uh, but but when we were kids, when teachers would ask us what we wanted to be when we grew up, we would be like, "Oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fire firefighter. I want to be, you know, whatever, an actor." Kids today want to be Twitch streamers. 
Yeah. What's happened to our society? How do you even walk around to work? It's just got to be a sea of kids doing Fortnite dances. Dude, <laughs> I've seen so many Fortnite dances. Uh, not as much as of recently, surprisingly enough. It's because um, everyone jumped to Apex Legends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Kid, uh, yeah. Well, I will say, too, like, uh, I, I was kind of curious to just try out the try out like, forget it like i you know when like facebook when you watch a video that someone posts and then the next video just automatically keeps uh another video will just play yeah 90 percent of the time for me the next is someone streaming fortnite i'm like yeah. get out of my face get yeah. out of my face fortnite uh but i was a huge fan of titanfall 2 as you know and i i didn't play a whole lot of the uh online just mostly because i don't have time to really i'd kind of dabble in it just check it out and that's about it but it's basically uh respawn's next game yeah and we were thinking because you know at, at first people were like oh they're working on another game and hopefully it's titanfall 3 with how amazing uh titanfall 2 was mm -hmm. after ea bought them but uh uh this looks cool like it looks like a really uh tolerable version of the battle royal it looks basically like titanfall without titans yeah yeah so i might give it a go at one point actually just free whatever i'm not gonna buy any loot boxes or any of that shit i'll just check sure, it out sure. a couple matches one afternoon or something but it's not something i can see myself getting right into uh, right. i'm a little so, disappointed. i'm hoping that they eventually do a titanfall 3 or something else where they get to use their story writing abilities because that was one yes. of the best first person shooter stories i've played in a long time I'd say one of the best just in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what, what half life? Any other. Just uh, <laughs> triggered. Uh, no. uh, any final thoughts on Nintendo Direct before we move on? No, nah, that's about it. It was, yeah, like it was better than, better than usual. Like, a, like I said, I usually just kind of read a, read a write-up of what was announced or what they talked about and if it sounds worth it check it out uh this one honestly i just saw snake and uh simon belmont amiibos and was like ah, maybe i'll check it out and then that zelda caught me completely off guard yeah for sure but yeah that's it cool so uh i wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about spider-man uh for any listeners who might not know Jason is a big Spider-Man fan, and uh, I thought it would be fun to kind of spend a little time talking about Spider-Man. Now that wait. I've completed the game, we're, of course, talking about Spider-Man for the PS4. I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'd started it earlier in January, and then I took a little break to play through Resident Evil, jumped back into it. I was pretty dang close to the end of the game uh, where I left off, and then I finished up the game, and I was ran through the, the D three DLCs because the final part of the DLC had just basically released like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and I was just sitting here silently like, boy, if you don't get back to Spider-Man after that Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I picked it up on launch. I pre-ordered it. I was so stoked for it. I think I played through the whole main game in four or five days. Yeah, that was quick. It was one of my first Platinums. Uh, and then I waited till all three DLCs were out, and then I jumped in on that. Kicked the shit out of those basically one a night. <laughs> like three yep. nights in a week. And good. God. What a game. I can't yeah. say I can't say I enjoyed the. Definitely weren't on the like, greatness level of the main game, but it was the really DLCs, good back yeah. to. Like I was definitely glad that I had that time in between, mm -hmm. or I probably would have been flat out sick, sick of some of the elements of the DLCs. Yes, probably because I was. Yeah. Uh, so, like, so overall, for me, the critique of the game. 
awesome game. Uh, I, I particularly call it spectacular. Uh, uh, spectacular Spider-Man. Amazing. <laughs> Sensational. You know, all, all of those things. That game was definitely very web of. But with that said, by the time I finished the game, well, by the time I finished the main game, especially by the time I finished the DLCs, I was kind of like this game could have probably been like, including the DLCs for me, could have probably been maybe like 10 to 15 hours shorter. Uh, a lot of the the side stuff is bloat. kind of fun as it was. Yeah, it was very bloated. It was a lot of like the... So uh, it's not really a spoiler for anybody listening. So as you play through the game, you're, you're, you're in Manhattan. You know, that's where Spider-Man is. Yeah, yeah. And different areas of Manhattan, like they'll, as the story progresses, it'll unlock additional things to do, whether it be challenges or little side missions. Um, Crimes to meet or uh, bad guy bases. To yeah, lots of, lots of things. And most of it was fine. But the goddamn crimes. Oh, my God. They, they like seriously, the last five, like five hours, like of the main campaign for me was just playing through crimes to get them all beaten. Like there was one, uh, uh, you'll hit a story beat and they're like, oh, hey, guess what? You have 75 new crimes to take care of. I'm like, fucking kill me now. <laughs> like, As far as the main game went for me, that mm-hmm. was the only thing that I could have done with less of in the main game. So... Uh, there is. It's because you couldn't just go. Oh, there's the next crime. You had to walk around, or you had to swing around, pushing that button. The you'd re- click the right stick over and over to, to like put out almost like a sonar for crimes. Mm-hmm. And then finally, after like two minutes of just swing around aimlessly, they'd be like, "Oh, we got a a break in on 45th. <laughs> and the officers on scene. Just shots fired. And then you're like, go there, and you just beat up five guys. And you're like, come on. Can I just be trying to think of like how many regions there were in of Manhattan because it's broken into chunks and there was like yeah, I think there's nine of them and they all nine. have like twenty things to twenty crimes it, or something. I think there was yes, yeah, so either I think it was fifteen actually. Yeah, it was ridiculous because there was like the thugs, then there was the the uh, demons, the sable, and then the sable. Yeah, and I, then the DLCs all had their own so. I mean, well, that's what I was gonna say. Like fucking math, three, nine times three, fifteen. Three, too three, many. Too the many. Main, yeah, the main game. We had at least the variety, where mm-hmm. you could you could switch. Like I did, you know, when find the backpacks. I found all the backpacks. Yeah. Find, find those I little science, find those little science stations. Like a lot of the stuff opens up, like after a couple of uh, story missions happened. Mm-hmm. And if you do them right then, it doesn't seem very overwhelming. Uh, well, but, then, that, but then you get, but then you get to the actual uh, ones where it's like uh, infiltrate a base, which is basically like uh, like five waves of uh, harder. The enemies get a little bit harder. You know, it's kind of like a gauntlet. Yeah. And, it, and then you do that, and then each area will have like one of those, and then you'll there'll be uh, these other like mercenaries called the Sable units. And they'll have a different kind of thing. And that way, at least it had variety. But when you go into the DLC, the crimes are the exact same crimes. And the bases are basically just harder from the start. Yep. A little bit harder. And then you have the uh, the challenges that I hated in the first, in the main place. That's, or the main game. That's the only things I really hated. Mm-hmm uh the screwball challenges so there was more of those in every one all three of them had more screwball challenges and her voice is so grating to me that it was it was just annoying to me that i had to even interact with this character (laughs) speedball wasn't too bad for me uh i just kept thinking i'm pretty sure uh, she's the same voice actress as magilu from tales of basiria (laughs) and uh, even though Magilu was pretty annoying in Tales of Assyria, like I liked the character. Yeah. 
And she, she just really kept making me think of Majalu. And like I wish I'd had that that thought link that could have maybe made it less grating. <laughs> and um, the constant like it, I mean, it's kind of annoying, like the like when you have well her, well, her whole persona though was like well, it's just constantly memeing. Yeah, she was trying to be relevant, and she was always talking about her followers. And oh, I we need to get fifty more likes, or there's gonna be trouble. My my <laughs> fans are gonna just. I think her attention horror, yeah, horror of it of it was what really got to me. It wasn't really even the voice, which mm. is literally everything her voice said. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah it, so it, was I, it, it was basically the ugliest part of social media in human form. Yeah, and um, and you don't get to punch her in the face, mm. so there so, was no, there was no payoff. So I will say, um, like I said, so for the main main campaign itself, if it was like half the crimes, which essentially yeah. would break out to like it'd be probably be like five hours of gaming throughout the entire game, like yeah, yeah the crimes were like definitely the biggest offender because it just became mon- like soup. Like at the end, like I, so when I was wrapping up the last like chunk of like, especially like when I was doing the Sable crimes and kind of like finishing up the game, uh, I had actually, Justin came over, hung out for the weekend and like, the whole time I was just fucking bitching, like, just like, oh my, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't end, it wouldn't end. And then yeah. when I moved on to the DLC, I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to do some story stuff. And they're like, at least hey, cries, more crimes. I was like, no. At, at least in the DLC, you didn't have to do it for all the regions of the map again. Yeah, yeah. There was only what like five per area, but still, yeah, five, five to twenty-five. A lot less, but um, seventy-five. But overall, the game, like I said, it was the game was great. The DLCs, uh, some of the the story arcs, I thought were really interesting. I'm not. I don't follow the comics, so I don't really know some of the support characters they introduced. Like the uh, I spoilerish thing. I, I guess I won't say too much. But uh, uh, Yuri, the character you work with, like apparently she becomes a thing. Which I was like, oh, I had no idea, and I didn't make the connection uh, at first. But I'm pretty sure. In one of the more recent Spider-Man movies, they mentioned Miles. Miles is he, Miles. In, is he in the Spider-Verse one? He's in the Spider-Verse one, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I didn't actually make that connection until like way later. And I was like, oh, so my okay, my oh Miles. Ah, okay, gotcha, what, gotcha. What about the negative man? Were you surprised by that at all? Uh I didn't really know much. I don't know the character. I, I as Did far you, as I re- recall, I'm not familiar with the Negative Man character at all. He's a he's a way newer character. He's only from like 2010. 2010 okay, so yeah, so I didn't know him at all. Uh, Speedball, I wasn't familiar with. Um, no, Screwball sucks. She's, or Screwball. Uh, she's from Who the Fuck Cares. I don't um, know. I'm trying to think. There was a a couple others that I wasn't really familiar with. I thought. Yeah, Miles is a newer thing. There's a. Like I like I said, when I, the Spider Verse movie, I liked it as its own movie, but uh, having that many like Spider characters in a Spider Man thing was like, well, why is Spider Man special then? Mm-hmm. I'd be like, it's like when Batman has all his sidekicks at once. You're like, I don't, I don't want any of them. Can they all go away? That's mm-hmm. why I like the Arkham games so much. Is that you know they're there and they're around, but you don't ever see them. Yeah, like Robin is always like doing something else in Nightwing. You're like if. If you played the game and it was constantly you and Nightwing or you and Batgirl, you'd be like, "Go away!" <laughs> Batman is coolest when it's just Batman. I mean, sure. I mean, it's my opinion, but that's the same way I feel like. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as, as far as the as twists go, the one in the first DLC, I don't want to spoil it too much. So, yeah, uh, that I saw that coming a mile away. Mm. Because uh, I just know that from the comics. Sure, sure. So I was just like, oh. As soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, that's, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as soon yeah. as I saw him, I was like, okay, yeah. Sure. Uh, and I will say, so uh, I think it was around the time when they were uh, announcing, when they first announced 
the the DLC and that black cat was going to be in it. There was a lot of people on the internet that were all like all up in arms. They're like, Oh, they, Oh, SJWs, black cat. They made her like stupid and stuff or whatever. Like I thought she ended up, she, I thought she was really cool. Like, yeah, think, sure. She didn't have her like suit, like halfway zipped down to her pelvic region with like her tits hanging out and stuff like old school, but I, thought she was pretty cool overall um this is gonna be a very divisive thing i'm saying so you don't okay. have to agree with me okay i like black cat more than catwoman even though she's clearly a ripoff of catwoman oh black cat i i can agree with you i think on that i've always liked her more and yeah I mean, she does seem a little cooler to me i mean i don't know how i think more just in games and comics if they did her in a movie i don't think i'd like Michelle Pfeiffer, you can't beat that. Yeah. But <laughs> you can definitely beat Halle Berry, though. That was just got awful. Black Hat's been a little bit more um, aware, I guess. And mm -hmm. she's kind of like, you know, yeah, strong, independent woman sort of thing. Where Black Cat was, she was too, but not, she wasn't as like, I don't know. Was, I think maybe it's like the extra like confidence I don't know. They're very, they are very similar, but I, yeah, I, they're I, very I, different I, at the same time. They, they have yeah. different origins is totally different characters behind the mask kind of thing, but it's obviously, you know, that's just like green arrow and Hawkeye and, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're very similar <laughs> characters and they borrow from each other constantly, but yeah, pretty much. Part, I'm not saying I don't like Catwoman cause she's mm -hmm. awesome too, but I think I've always liked black cat a bit more. Sure. Sure. Know? Um, but yeah, though, and everyone was all pissed off that the Black Cat mini mission, it's only like a small side thing. Mm. It was, oh, it's just getting you to buy the DLC. And I was like, ah, it was satisfactory for the game, even if you didn't get the, the DLC. There was just, yeah, it, it, was like a it was almost like a reference. This game was very full of references and yes, kind of, of I, insider I, things that, like, if you're into the comics, yeah. even, even I, I what kind of. I, that, that was one thing that was unfortunate is that, that I'm not up to current with Spider-Man information anymore. Uh, I never really was great, but I, I had a lot more grasp on things up until like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I did know, I was like, I know this is something, but I'm like, I, I don't know what it is. I actually looked up a couple things just to be like, okay, I, this is definitely going to be a character. And I was like, oh, okay, I see. Well, some of the suits had me looking up shit, like yeah, the, <laughs> like the like the Ghost Rider looking one. I was like, what? Like some of them, uh, probably I'd say ninety percent of the suits I knew what they were from. Yeah, uh, uh, it, so was, it, it was kind of neat. The like I heard about, oh, you can basically be whatever Spider Man you want to be. Um, I didn't think it was going to be as extensive as it was, so it was kind of neat seeing like the twenty ninety nine Spider Man and. Oh, it was really uh, cool. Scarlet Spider. Scarlet Spider and stuff like that. I was like, oh, that's that's pretty neat. I actually didn't use a lot of the suits. Um, I switched up. Some of them are just ugly as hell. Yeah, there was a few. <laughs> uh, what? Which one would you say you end up using the most? Oh, fuck. Or was I, there I, 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 switched a, I switched a lot. Okay. Uh, as far as suit powers, I almost always had the Iron Spider-Man. I used the... Spider -Man's because they're just... It, it would be almost like when they were crowding into me, I just bust those out and kick everyone's ass away from me. So I used like, uh, one of the early ones. I think it was called like Web Spinner or something. Where okay, yeah, he, he jumps up and he spins around, and shoots out webs, and like yeah. basically normal enemies, like he instantly like knocks yeah, them out or he webs them to stuff. Yeah, webs them down. Yeah. So it was like almost like instant room clear a lot of times. So I pretty much yeah. used that the entire game. Yeah, um, I, I had the arms unlocked because it was part of like the pre-order thing I got. Which I gotta say, I pre-ordered it and it didn't show up the day it came out, which angered me more than yes. it should have. Because when I pre-order from Amazon, it seems like the only time I don't get it the day it comes out is when it's something I'm really looking forward to. The only time I can think of is God of War and yeah. Spider-Man. And I was yeah. like livid. And I didn't do anything or even really say anything when... I got God of War late, but Spider-Man, I actually called and was like, so did I not give you guys enough notice when I pre-ordered in April that I wanted this game? Right. <laughs> and they were like, oh, sorry, sorry. And I thought maybe they'd give me like 
ten dollar credit or some shit, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, yeah, well, you can just have the game and enjoy it when it shows up." And I was like, "Whoa, awesome!" So then I, I had no I immediately bought the DLC without even playing the game. I was like, "I got to put some money towards this game then." Yeah, yeah. Uh, suits as far as suits for me, uh, I probably mostly used Spider Punk and just the 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 standard new spider-man suit okay i didn't like i don't like the white lines on it uh i didn't I, mind it too much um i always i don't know first i'm i'm weird messing with i've always been weird about like messing with canon in games like wearing alternate suits like resident evil like i i got the dlcs with the the collector's edition no. you know i had uh the the liza walker bike suit and stuff and it's like ah, i just can't use those it just doesn't feel the same i didn't switch the soundtrack once because i was like i want to see what yeah. i did with it but, but then again I, like i, I said i, was, I, I, I use spider was. punk a lot yeah well i uh i can't remember what suits were automatically unlocked when i got because i got this little thing that it was like uh i don't know you get like a couple suits unlocked, a couple powers i think iron spider was one of them because that's how i had the iron spider arms uh I don't know, a couple of like the mid, mid unlockable ones. So I saved a few points on having to buy those kind of things, yep. and I think they gave me a few points, some shit like that. But I, uh, I, I started. I think the first thing I switched to was Scarlet Spider because that was one of the first cool ones. Yeah, same I, here. I, I, if it looked not god awful, I probably tried it for a couple missions in general. <laughs> and with all the crimes to do, I was. Yeah. I I really liked the end game, one, the one he makes. At the very end of the, of the main story, uh, um, I, I really liked it. The black and gold. It was. Oh sure. I really like this. I used one that I got at the. 2099. I actually thinking back. 2099. I used for a while. I'm a big fan of the 2099. Look. Yeah, there's something about it. it looks cool. I didn't use. I mean, like I said, I didn't use most of them very much, at all. Some nope. of them I, I didn't even equip them. No, there's a couple that were just really ugly. Like especially. Uh, some of those ones that were just barely Spider-Man at all. Like, yeah, they're like some kind of concept art ones. Or there was one that looked like a Union Jack almost. I was like, no. And there's that like electro, uh, uh, like electric. I don't know. Yeah, real, real padded suit. I was like ugly. Yeah, yeah. But not, not, I didn't stray too far from actual like Spider-Man. Uh, although I will say from the DLC suits, the original iron uh spider armor suit i wore that through the whole first and almost second yeah uh, there was one that was like from one the, of those dlc ones it was kind of like it's all silver it were there was one that was like sci-fi ish looking that i thought was pretty cool i kind of used that a little bit at the end actually i think you get it at one of, it's one of the the third dlc ones oh, okay yeah, that was a little bit of a bummer. Like you've already played through the whole game, so you got yeah. these couple of cool suits that you can use for five minutes because there's not nothing left to do because mm -hmm. you've already done all the other shit. That's the only bummer to me is I hundred percented the main game, got the plan, hundred percented all three add-ons, but between the game coming out and the DLC coming out, they decided to add new game plus, so I don't actually have a hundred percent on Spider-Man. Oh. And the only way I'm going to get it is if I play through New Game Plus on the hardest mode, mm. which which I just simply don't have time for, which really bums me out. Yeah, yeah. This is how much I like Spider-Man. It felt good to have that completed, but um, it's not that big of a a deal. Yeah. To it's not gonna like. You're, OCD, it, you're, like I'm not OCD about it. Like you, uh, like I have barely any platinum. Got platinum. Yeah, I think I have like five platinums all together the other is like near automata god of war uh and like a telltale batman which is like automatic if you just play the game <laughs> yeah, yeah so the other one and then you know, like some vr ones the vr games aren't very long mm -hmm. but that, that was one of the ones where it felt like it mattered and now i'm like oh no i don't have it that sucks yeah <laughs> but i would say uh much i mean the c comparison's already been stated over and over yeah. uh Arkham. Uh, Arkham games to Batman is what Spider-Man PS4 is to Spider-Man. Like it's yeah. How, how many of the older Spider-Man games have you played? Like did you? I play have played. 
One on the NES. Okay. That's maximum, it. Maximum Carnage. You played Maximum Carnage. Oh, yeah, Maximum Carnage. Do not oh, and a little bit of separation anxiety. Yeah. But, not but, like, but none of the 3D ones? No. None, none, none of the, the Activision ones. ones or, oh, bud. Now, I, hear, I hear that that one, the PS2 one, is like basically Spider-Man. like the early version of this. Spider-Man 2. The only, my only actual complaint, besides, it would actually make me not care that much that there are so many crimes, mm. is that Spider-Man 2 had like a grapple system where you could do like slams. And especially there was this thing I would do anytime I caught like a, there was a, a purse snatcher crime in that game. Mm. And I would catch the purse snatcher no matter where I was. This was after a while, after I, like, I was pretty much running out of stuff to do, but I still wanted to play the game. Mm. I would catch the purse snatcher and I would swing all the way to the Empire State Building, swing up as high as I could go, and there was this spinning pile driver move you could do. I would <laughs> kill that guy for stealing someone's purse. <laughs> On the top of the Empire State Building. Yeah, I would swing up until I couldn't swing up any higher, and then I would press the circle button, I think it was, and it would start the spinning. And if you push it faster, he spins faster. And I would kill that guy worse than <laughs> anybody, any any of the super actual super powered guys in the game never you can't got carry beat anybody up. in this one. Yeah, that's that's my only that's my only gripe with this game is there's no grapple fighting system. I used to like like grabbing a guy and you could throw him. I mean you can do it with the webs. Mm. But you could like pick them up and throw them, and it was a lot of that stuff that you can do with the webs. But there was like some uh, my most my most missed move is the spinning pile driver. I I lo- I loved doing that because when you pile drive near other guys, it would knock them all down too. Ooh ooh wee. Yeah, good stuff. So I think I've played every Spider-Man game, and this is definitely the best one. Yeah, uh, it was it was great. Um, sh- Shout out again to uh, Stanley Cameo. Hell yeah. Every Every right in the feels. Yeah, man. The... Especially, yeah. and at the, it, at the end, there's like the dedicated to Stan Lee, and it's got a picture of him. That hit me right in the feels, too. That, that, that hit Double. me in the feels as much as the end of the main game. I was just like, oh. Yeah. You're going to make me do it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's going to be a sad day when the last of his cameos. Of- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I actually kind of hope that that uh, that that thing that people are have going around actually gained some traction where they wanted Deadpool mm-hmm. to uh, take over Stanley's cameos, but as like Stanley like wearing a mustache and Stanley glasses, just like be in every movie. That would, I, might, I might that would that would be awesome. That would be like the greatest tribute you could do. Like there's got to be some, some kind of tribute to Stanley. Yeah, I hope going forward. Like he was even in DC movies in mm-hmm. cameos sometimes. Like I told you before the podcast. The yeah. Fans go movie. He's like they hit him with a car and he's like, I don't care that this is a DC movie. I love cameos. <laughs> so yeah, that that that'd be like the ultimate justice they could do for him is just have something funny. Like Deadpool is the perfect character to do something like that. See now and it, and it wouldn't be seen as like disrespectful, but if they had like somebody else do it. You, it would almost seem disrespectful, even though they weren't. It wasn't coming from a bad place. But mm. I, I think with Deadpool, everyone would be like, "Ah, that's awesome." Yeah, yeah. Because if they go any farther than that, then you're bringing in fucking like the estates and legal crap. And yeah, f- from the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, like I don't want anybody who can uh, uh, potentially take advantage of his legacy to be able to do so. Yeah, so, yeah. Like that's. I, I like that Deadpool idea. That's that's pretty great. Yeah, so I think they should do that. That'd be amazing. Um, so yeah, what were your thoughts on like the actual story itself? Besides, like you know, the gameplay. Uh, story was the overall. The story was fine. I didn't like think it was particularly great. Uh, I like how everything was presented. Uh, I liked. I'll, I really liked a lot of the stuff, the the uh, dynamics, and like kind of the the story with. Uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Mary Jane. Yeah. Uh, I, like I really that. liked her as a character. Uh, and like them and kind of like them like patching up their r- relationship and stuff. And Yeah, I like how it's like they were, it was almost established like he didn't have to become yes, Spider-Man yeah. at the beginning. 
It yes. was like, okay, we know who Spider-Man is. We know who most of these characters are. Yes, most it's, most everything, they, they're like, this exists. If you don't know who it is, doesn't really matter. Just roll with it. And like, he's working with Otto Octavius. And if you don't know who that is, you've never watched or played a Spider-Man thing before. But you're kind of it's interesting. That. And they threw in like some little things where you're like, oh, oh, here it comes. And then, oh. Yeah, which I thought was interesting that like everybody was established, but not Doc, Doc. Uh, Doc Ock. Yeah, and Osborne didn't seem to be either. Yeah. Um, that's the way I liked it. Is like it's all people you recognize. They're all part of the world already, and no one's being kind of like brought in. Yeah, uh, some of them he's already fought, like Scorpion and Electro. And they they, like re they referenced like they referenced the Lizard, and like he's yeah. not even in the game. Yeah, and that's what I liked that they didn't blow their whole. Yeah. the whole uh, rogues gallery loaded in one game because some people were like with the suits they're like where's the black costume yeah yeah so like, well, i like how they kind of mixed up like some of the like yeah like we're, we're, like where they are in the story like yeah like he doesn't work at the daily bugle anymore Jane, uh, uh Jane does she does and jameson he's no he's longer a, there. He's basically Alex Jones. Yeah, he's yeah, basically a radio podcaster kind of thing. Just fucking, you know, basically just, just yeah. shit, shitting on Spider Man conspiracy theories the whole time. Yeah, trying so, to convince everything is Spider Man. That's why, like, it's it's all familiar, but it's all different, but it's not too different. Like, it's it's further in the story. It's not yeah, the yeah, origin story again. Yeah, it's not just like the tired old uh, Spider Man stuff. So it's it kept with what you know, but uh, the way, yeah, it made the stuff in the story still a surprise that you even knew was going to kind of happen mm. at some point, which is, that's, that's what I really enjoyed. Cause yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary Jane, uh, not Mary Jane, uh, Aunt May working at that shelter was a cool new thing. She was just a homebody. Yep. Uh, someone just to be in distress and, kind of thing They're like uh, yeah i really like what they pretty much did with every character i can't think of a character that i'm like uh they fucked that up like yeah yeah so, a, lot of, a lot of the little things i mean I, ultimately i think that makes or breaks a lot of games is just like a little attention to details like um i think it was maybe it was you somebody told me about uh, all of Spider-Man's lines were done twice. Oh, yeah, every line that he says, he, he he recorded twice. He recorded just normal and then, like, exerted. So, like, when you're swinging around and stuff, like, you can hear, like, yeah. his, yeah, like... Yeah, oh, yeah. He, <laughs> that might be me, yeah. Because then it's not like, hey, how are you doing, Mary Jane? Yeah, otherwise, it's like, like, if you're just... Like, hey, Hey, MJ, how's it going? Because yeah, like, she calls him and he's fighting someone. Yeah. So he's like, hey, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, <laughs> like, the, 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 like the different like swings that he does. Like sometimes he'll spin and sometimes he'll do a little flip. And, um, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the swinging was definitely the best it's been in, in any of the Oh, games. so great. They, uh, they took Basically, the Spider-Man just... swing and, and added to it to make it I mean, Spider-Man 2 is already pretty much top tier, but yeah, it's not been really bad in any of the games mm. pretty much since uh, Spider-Man 2. It was kind of shitty in Spider-Man 1, and the Activision games were a little older, so mm. you, know, you kind of let it go. But yeah, definitely there was... Uh, there's no no real room for improvement as far as swing yeah. goes. I don't think. Yep. Uh, graphically, I thought the game looked great. Um, Just funny, details. even like funny, the... funny enough is like you know, um, especially <laughs> for some reason. Just because I'm still kind of like annoyed by people uh, crapping on uh, Fallout 76 so much <laughs> and the glitches. Um, I actually encountered two glitches playing Spider-Man. I had a hard crash, crashed right back to the main menu of PlayStation, and there was one fight. Uh, a lot of times when you're doing story fights in this game, you'll you'll fight the guys, 
and then more guys will come and sometimes they'll come out of rooms and buildings and stuff. And this one fight, um, actually towards the end of the, I'm trying to think it was towards the end of the third DLC. It was a hammerhead fight on top of a building, on top of a skyscraper. And there's this little part where uh, like roof access, this door opened up and these guys came out and I went to attack a guy and I went in the room and the door is closed and I was stuck in this room. I couldn't do anything. I'd like, that's on you. That's Spider Manning. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, segue not to talk about Fall 76 anymore. How has nobody, how have I not heard anybody say this until now when people are talking crap about Fall 76, calling it Fall 70 sucks? How have, you, how, how have we not heard that? I think that's gold. It is. That's gold. That's right, that's right up there with Chubsy. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. You got to so, uh, TM, TM that. Uh, I I don't get credit for that. Uh, that comes from the um, uh, Polykill podcast. I'm not, I might have seen that. No, I've know. never heard that. And I've been in it when it comes to fall because I, I read a lot because I'm, you know, oh, I, 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 I look for the people who, you know, who like the game and they're out there, you know, the, they're the, out there. They're, they're the one in every 15 comments. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I, less. I, Let's I'm not. I'm, I'm still on the fence, basically. I, I can't say I loved it, but I can't say I hated it. But. There was elements. But Spider-Man. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up Spider-Man final thoughts here. That's me wrapping it up like webs. Perfect. Uh, no, it's great. I, I say if you got a PS4, if you like, if it looks like you might, if you think you might enjoy it, play it. It's great. If it's not really your thing, play it. I don't care. Shut up. Play it's. It. I mean, it's really. It's. It's great. It's something it, that you should at least check out. Like. Yeah. It's. Um, it's something special. They they put a there's a lot of love put into this game. They they did they did it right. Yeah, and they like I said, they didn't blow the whole rogues gallery. They still got plenty of bad guys they could use in the second one. Uh, I liked that they used some lesser known guys like Mister Negative and yeah, like I didn't even know. And then they kind of changed up things because it was essentially it was like the Sinister Six. Yeah, yeah, it was basically what was made to look out. Look, look like it was going to be. And it's kind of how they set it up, but then there's also the side... Yeah, they just basically gave you the, a week in Spider-Man's life. Like, it's not just... Nothing yeah. straightforward. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty neat. So um, I cannot wait till the second one comes out. Yeah, I... I like, where's the Venom? You're like, come on, man. Not everything has to have Venom. There's, like, not everything... Oh, he was... And see, that's another thing is like, uh, only mention that I caught the entire game of Eddie Brock was when we ordered some pizza at some point. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I was like, like oh, everything oh. was referenced. There was, you kind of, you know, they didn't talk about Cletus Cassidy really at all, which is Carnage. Oh my God. They could, if, they, they, could if, do, they could do what? a next gen maximum yeah. Carnage. Oh my God. That'd be awesome. That'd be the, I mean, Jesus Christ. And get green Spider Man, Omniac, Spider Man 2 is Maximum Carnage. Or get the jizz pants. in my pants, just like the song. And, and Lonely get, Island, if anybody get, hasn't heard it, look it get up. Green Jello to like do an updated version of the song. Dude, I, I could send. I could send Little Man Speaker. Well, actually, he doesn't need to do updated version. It's a full Carnage Rules. That was the theme song from Maximum Carnage for the Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis. Like that is a full song, yeah. that was a Green Jello song before they midied it for for the games. Like it's actual yeah. song that they did on the uh, the the three three eight three album. Uh, I liked it. And uh, Bill, it's basically how I Bill heard Man it. Send him a message right now. I said, "Hey, Bill, Insomniac is making Maximum Carnage, <laughs> just an updated version of Carnage Rules," and he'd be like. As long as they give me a few bucks, probably because 
I, oh, need, I need fourteen dollars gas money to get to the studio, and then basically, I'm, like, <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't oh, I'm keeping it off. So, uh, this has been brought up. We got to touch on this, even uh, even, if, even if it was just a reference in the game, like you know how in uh, Terminator uh, Salvation, when he like yeah. fires up the radio to get that guy's attention, and yes, it, you could be mined by by Guns and Roses, which is. Yes. A, Awesome Terminator 2 reference. Yes. Uh, if they just had like someone listening to Carnage Rules. <laughs> at some well, point, if they do have to, they have to. They, they have, to. have to do that. They really do. They really should. Because it's cool. It was great. And Green Jello is awesome. One of my all time favorites. They suck. And that's great. And that's, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, that's what it is. Green Jello sucks. Just remember that. And, and Bill Man's is just such an awesome person like he does what he does because he enjoys it but because of the joy that he gets from the fans because the green jello show which pe people might not know green jello is still a thing kind of uh basically bill man speaker who is the front man for green jello mostly well known for the three little pigs if anybody hadn't heard that song in the mid '90s, I'm sorry for your childhood. Yeah, anytime. My my daughter, speaking of which, brought home the Three Little Pigs, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Oh yeah, read me the story." I was like, "Only if we get to listen to a song after." And I showed her the song, and she's totally heard the song because I I totally put it on for her when she was younger. But she's like, she, I was like, "Do you remember that song?" She's like, "No, you don't remember the story of the Three Little Pigs." I'll show you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this book's all wrong because there's no Rambo anyway. Yeah, they just get murdered. The thrill things are getting murdered. Or the wolf does yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyways, uh, yeah, so Bill Mann's speaker, basically, uh, he tours. Um, he kind of looks for, or it's usually fans a lot of times or venues getting in contact with him and said, hey, come play here. You know, he doesn't, it's not like, much money and stuff. Um, it's almost like a convention appearance. Yeah, yeah. And there's it, demand it, for your band, a band of over a thousand, where he has no like dedicated band. Mm -hmm. But every time he goes to areas, like people will drive states to come play shows. Like it's it's basically like wherever he goes, he finds local people to to be the band. And it's basically a big party. It's messing around for like an hour. Like, you know, it's a ton of fun. I've seen, seen him three times now. I, I constantly ask him. I'm like, hey, can you please come to Minnesota? He's like, hey, get me a venue. <laughs> and I've tried. I've tried. I've tagged venues. Nothing. I've never been able to make anything happen. I know. I have a friend who knows promoters now. Like, well, I've kind of reconnected with a friend uh, well, in the local metal scene here. Well, I have a fucking birthday every year, man. So, dude, I could totally like if I could raise like I don't know how much he charges for a show. Uh, I should totally, totally fucking do that. I just need a place where he can actually play music. I got a garage. Not get the place called on us. I got a garage. We could put up mattresses against the walls. <laughs> could <laughs> potentially. <laughs> we'll see. You know, what? I, we'll say the venue is called the Asylum. That's why there's mattresses. I in think. There. I'm gonna make that a bucket list thing. Gotta get Green Jello to play live at some event. Oh, dude, I'm gonna be getting married here pretty soon. Oh, dude. Okay, <laughs> get it. You get a hold of him. Ask him. Maybe. No, but so so here's the thing about Green Jello show is is there's a lot of venues he's not allowed to play because <laughs> <laughs> he's able because you're able to kind of like. It, they get the shows get a little rambunctious. There's a little, uh, little craziness that goes on. Uh, a lot of people can get like pretty pumped at a Green Jello show, and he, he encourages people to <laughs> go go a little crazy. So I wouldn't want them like, you know, as a wedding band, they probably end up like, you know, potentially like trashing half the wedding. So I mean, maybe. Be a memory, that's for sure, but a little too chaotic, I think. Hey, remember when Green Jello destroyed your wedding? I mean, that'd be pretty awesome, honestly. 
<laughs> and honestly, my fiance, she'd probably be like, yeah, that, that'd be, that's pretty awesome too. <laughs> Cause she, I, I, she went with me to the, the first time I actually saw green jello and uh, she had a blast too. So that means anyways, Jesus Christ. Sorry about that. Everybody. Anyway, so maximum carnage would be a good follow up. Hell yes. Yeah, well, since they can't seem to set it up pop- properly in movies, they could do it in game form once again. Yes. And I think it's probably the only way, that, way they're going to be able to do it any justice. Yeah, really. Because there's just too much there to condense into a two-hour-long movie. Symbiotes could be two whole games, and no one's yeah. going to complain. Because, look, it was before, and no one complained. Right. And people are... Yeah, that's one of people's main complaints about this one, is that there's no... Symbiotes, you're like, give yes. it some time, bro. So, yes, so, so all in all, I guess we both liked it. Yes, so I, wish I, got, I got this amazing Venom statue from EB Games for yes. 30 bucks. It's like it's at least 12 inches tall, and I'm like, that would be a $200 thing. I'd believe that it was a $200 statue. Someone told me it was, I'd be like, yeah, I can't afford it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so let's uh, move on then to some community stuff, more particularly community question. Hell yeah. Uh, So last week, the question was, besides Resident Evil 2, what's your favorite Resident Evil game? And we did get some responses. Not a lot. I'm disappointed. Hey, just some. Get some. We, we could use more. True. So, anyways, uh, Bio Phoenix says his favorite Resident Evil game would have to be two and one remake. Oh yeah. He says uh, he hasn't yet to play a remake of two, but he's hyped. Well, it's something um, you need to play. Yes. I mean, then, uh, it might it might be someone like me where like the launch hype kind of keeps you away till everyone kind of shuts up about it. Then you're like, Ooh, and I can settle in and actually enjoy it. Yeah. And I, sure. uh, I got out ahead of it this time. Totally. Uh, then, uh, musty Hobbit of second breakfast says of the, of the resident evils that he's played for, uh, is his favorite. Solid choice. Yes. Uh, and then I think, I think that's it. Well, that's answers in general. That's all that's most we can ask for. Yes. I got to ask you, though, besides Resident Evil 2, what's your favorite Resident Evil game? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's almost a cop-out saying Resident Evil Remake. Because that's damn good. But Resident Evil Remake or Code Veronica are probably my other favorites. Three was good. I really like three. I liked Revelations a lot. Yeah. And four. Four, I, I'm I, I have a growing uh kind of animosity towards four. Is that because it to change? Yeah, it, it changed the series for the worst, I think. Um but it, I mean four is an awesome game. I'm I'm yes. not gonna deny that. Just a little bitter. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why you're dancing around the obvious best one. Because my favorite is Resident Evil 6. So, yeah. yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would have been be- a more effective troll if you said uh, 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 Umbrella Core. Oh, that's my one. It's Resident Evil 6, it's got so much variety. So, so many, so many, many characters. So many confusing different... So many convoluted story arcs. Yeah, it's like six games in one. Yeah, I know. How can you? <laughs> I mean, Wesker's kid is a badass. Yeah. Super dude. I mean, come on. You can kick ass as Wesker's Wesker's kid. Is Grown up Sherry. Survivor is so good. Also, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go with Code Veronica. Besides two is my favorite. You know, and what's interesting is I've been oh seeing God. discussions lately in like comment sections and stuff, and a lot of people seem to think Code Veronica was like this like really bad game. They're like, oh, it's, it's just an asset flip. 
And I was like, well, first of all, they're referring to three. And that's, I think a lot of people are like combining three and code Veronica. But a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, it was super boring and whatever. It's like, well, okay, obviously you never played it. I honestly need to revisit a lot. I of do them. too. I haven't I've played, played a lot played of these in a long time. I played them all at one point except for uh, Dead Aim. Mm. It's the only game I've never actually played. Uh, I've, I know I've beaten a lot of them. Like I've beaten the first three, four, Code Veronica, five. I've only actually ever played the demo of six, so that's how full of shit I was. <laughs> I played, I played, uh, I played the demo, I didn't get into it, but then I've got the, uh, I've got it on three systems because I keep finding, kept finding it cheap. And that's why I'm excited if they remake three that I can have uh, zero to potentially eight because apparently three is in development alongside eight. So huh. just hoping we might have the nine mainline entries on one console. That'd be pretty wild. Plus both Revelations games. So cool. What? Sweet. Oh, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna go with that. Uh, seven was awesome. Uh, I, seven was pretty I, good. I didn't. I never beat it. Seven though, because I started it on the Xbox One, then I got the VR, and I was determined to beat it in VR. It was, but that's the only game in VR that's given me fucking motion sickness. Uh, and I powered through a, a bit of it, but goddamn, even with some gravel, I didn't get very far. Sure, but, sure. But I got it down to I play you know, play with the settings enough that I think I could sit down and get through it without getting too sick. Anyway, that's uh yeah. right on. So uh, next next week's community question. Um, next week is a big milestone for the Absolutely. podcast. The biggest. <laughs> Episode 69. So I thought in what better way to celebrate uh, innuendos than fan service? Absolutely. Uh, Sort of. So my question for everybody is um, you can kind of look at this as two different ways. Uh, What is your favorite? What are what is your favorite or one of your favorite uh, fan service moments and or games and fan service can be can be the you know sexy the, kind or can just be the sexy kind or it can be the uh back reference thing reference that everybody kind. was wanting yeah so you know maybe maybe your favorite fan service moment is every moment in senran kagura games or <laughs> maybe your favorite fan service moment was uh stanley and uh spider-man on the ps4 or maybe your favorite was that uh, Dante actually looks like Dante in Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, so there's some wiggle room here. You know, uh, w- what you make of it. But uh, yeah, yeah, let what, us know favorite what, moments or favorite games that the developers gave you that just kind of got you. Like, oh man, they did that just for us. Yeah, It'd be pretty great. There is yeah, there's a lot of wiggle room. You could even. You could even answer both ways if you want. Just want some answers. Yes. Uh, so then, uh, moving on, uh, let's quickly look at upcoming games in the next couple weeks. Um, you know, the year's already off to a pretty good start. Hells yeah. Train's not stopping. So uh, one game that just released actually yesterday at the time of recording this podcast that I'm not sure if I mentioned last time. That looks pretty interesting. Is a game called The Liar Princess and the Blind Prince. It's a kind of like a side-scrolling action adventure game, sort of. Yeah, so you picked it up, yeah. Yeah, not it's not like an RPG. I think it is just a little platforming game. It's really short, kind of like it has this hand-drawn art style. It's a, a NIS America release. I like them. I like them a lot. They, they do a lot of cool like, stuff. I think like little charming titles and. Looks, looks like games that they like really put yeah. a lot of love into their characters. Totally, I've, I've picked up a ton of just just because it says NIS. I'm like, this looks kind of cool. And you're yes, like, oh, but who made it? it? Could be just cool on the cover and total. Yep. You're like NIS, eh. 
they actually make pretty decent games. So yep, yep. Yeah, uh, I saw it a little while ago, but it was looking pretty cool, and I kind of forgot about it. So I'm glad that you mentioned it because uh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, then uh, this week, probably after the podcast is uploaded, uh, we got Far Cry New Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you forgot about Jump Force. Jump Force. Speaking of fan service. There you go. That's a game only fan service. (laughs) Fighting game with all Shonen Jump characters. I've never been a big fan of most of the Shonen Jump properties myself. I can't say I'm either, but I can see why people are into it. Yes. Yeah, it's just a big fan service luge. Yeah, I've I've given a couple of those shows... uh, a pretty decent chance of just not for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, then also uh, Metro Exodus, which, you know, eh. I'm the series has always looked really interesting. I've just never played them. What? And, what the hell? And uh, I'm kind of on the side of the fans, kind of being upset that the uh, publishers pulled the game from Steam and are putting it on the Epic Game Store now. Yeah, well, you know what? That's what you get for wanting to buy it on PC. I I guess. (laughs) I guess. Years of of, uh, supporting a thing, and they get a big, nope, you can't buy it on your preferred platform. Screw you. Uh, It's out on PS4. It doesn't just, it's not just on Switch and PC. That's true. (laughs) Screw them all. Yeah, I guess just buy the, well, that's your... A game like Metro, any Metro game, you are definitely sacrificing quality if you're going to the consoles because the games have always kind of pushed graphics. Uh, have you played them though on the console? I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed them on both consoles. I'm sure, I'm sure. But if you really want the, you know, them extra, extra I, textures and wait, you know, wait, I thought we weren't about graphics on this podcast. Good graphics are nice though. Yeah, it's not it's not fucking Minecraft. Exactly. Same fucking Minecraft. <laughs> it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I don't know. I, like I said, uh, I, I always enjoy them. I yeah. played both the other ones, so I've been looking forward to this. It's just kind of out of. It a does bad look time. really cool. It's out at a bad time, just like Far Cry. Yeah. Uh, Far Cry, I'm not picking up until later because I never got back to five when I started it. So it's a continuation of five. So yeah. Like any of the other games, if you haven't played any of the previous ones, it doesn't really matter. This one kind of feels like I really need to play five before I jump into it. As much of a fan of the Far Cry series as I am, I'm definitely going to hold out on New Dawn. Yeah. Unless someone gives it to me, then I'll happily take it. But uh, Yakuza Kiwami is coming out on PC since you prefer PC and and haven't been playing uh, Yakuza yet. Maybe that's what you've been waiting for. Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> uh we also got anthem which i think uh i don't know I, I i don't think i'll be picking it up on launch i'm still interested i just need to know a little bit more yeah um i my hype has gone down a lot for it i think it was i think i chose it as like my game of e3 last year like how what i was most excited for yeah but it just looked more and more like uh, pressuring you to play with teams and stuff, and I'm, I don't feel I don't like being kind of strong armed into it. Like I tried the division uh, when it came out, I liked it a lot at first, but then it got to a point where it almost felt like it was at a wall where you're like, they're like, yeah. play, team, play with teams, or you're not going to get anywhere. Right. So and I just immediately quit. I was like, nah. So, uh, so yeah, we'll have to see how how it supports solo play. This says they say there's solo play, but I just mm-hmm. want to know on what level it is. Is it going to yeah. be? Uh, I, at the same time, my friend uh, is so hyped for it. He's like, "I got us a whole squad we can play with, and this and that." And, <laughs> That's uh, awesome. It, it's actually my friend that I played uh, Fallout seventy six with, uh-huh. and I'm like, "Yeah," but then I feel bad because I'm not as hyped as I was. Like I was as hyped as him, but now I'm just like, "We'll see." Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I almost feel pressured to get it. So I can play with them and just see, but I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Without with my limited time, I don't know if it's worth. Yep. It. Then um, I think 
for the rest of this month. That's mostly it. What well, near Automata Game of the Yorha editions coming out on the twenty first? How dare you not mention ports. this? I usually don't mention ports. It's not a port. It's a PS four. It's a port. It. <laughs> Game of the Year edition. Yeah. It was a joke. I just thought you'd at least mention it. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's a pretty pretty solid month as far as that goes. Yeah. And this year is ramping up to be another two thousand eighteen. Honestly. Yeah, a lot of good shit. Almost too many games to be excited for. You got to be overcritical, like we are with Anthem. Yeah, I'm sure. So, uh, what you got going on the next couple weeks then? Well, not going out of town, so I can play some friggin' games. That's for sure. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go hard on the VR as soon as I'm done Resident Evil. I don't know how much of the extra stuff I'm gonna do. I'm looking forward to the add-ons for Resident Evil too. So yes, kind of go survivors. I'm kind of glad I'm still. Oh like, shit! That's right. That's uh, those come out tomorrow, Friday. actually. Friday. Friday. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to. Yep. That. Um, yeah, I'll probably play that and then go into some VR hard because I've been picking them up like crazy and. Cool. I, I've been dabbling in them, but kind of going on to stuff like Resident Evil because I can't help it. But yeah, that's pretty much my main focus. So hopefully. Awesome. Knocking out because when VR is like I always say, oh, I'm gonna play this long game, then I'm gonna mm. knock out some short games, and VR games are both. So yep. it's awesome. What do you got going on? Yeah, so I will be finishing Job Simulator for sure. Hell yeah. Um, then I will definitely be playing the the Ghost Survivors uh, DLC for Resident Evil Two. So cool that uh, it's free. Yes, totally. Then I think uh, I will probably I'll probably start uh, Catherine since it's the game of the month for the Cartridge Club. I've always I've never to... played it before. I almost grabbed it a few times and I was like, I'll wait for it to go cheap, and then I just couldn't find it. But yeah, it's a game I've, it's always interested me. Yeah, uh, story's supposed to be pretty great. I'm not so sure. I'm. I played gonna demo. love the gameplay because it's basically a puzzle game. Yeah, but I guess the story and everything is supposed to be just great. Yeah, the the, the puzzle parts are like in the guy's dreams, and yeah, they're, it's really messed up. Like the demo was pretty cool of it, and that's as much of a, as I've ever played. But yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely one of those like when you're in the mood for something different, check this game out. Yes. Kind of thing. But and then uh, past that, I'm not sure. I forgot sure. to mention like some of the biggest news. What's that? For me. What's that? I can't believe I didn't mention it till just now. So I'm going to E3 this year. Yeah. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. my God. And the passes just went up for sale yesterday. Hell yeah. And I snagged me some of them shits. Me and my wife are actually going to E3 for our 10th wedding anniversary. So, yeah, yeah. And yeah. No, no one's going to believe me, but it was her idea. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So, so that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a random offhand awesome. mention of something I'm super worth a mention. Yeah, we will right. definitely uh, be getting all the juicy details when the time comes. Oh, yeah, the E3 podcast this year is going to be on fire. Lit from the Lit. floor. Yes. So uh, then I want to let everybody know how they can get a hold of us if they want to get a hold of us. Uh, of course, the podcast is hosted on YouTube and SoundCloud. You can listen to it on iTunes and pretty much any podcast app that has podcasts. Look us up, Game Tennis Podcast. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look up the Game Grinder, and you can find Jason on YouTube and Facebook. Look up Corpse Flood Gaming. Absolutely. Hit us up. Let us know what's up. Yeah. Let's Tell us how it is playing what you're looking forward to coming up in the next couple weeks absolutely so with that then that is going to do it for this episode of the game tennis podcast thanks for listening and we will talk to you next time now get the hell out of here